listening to the Pink Hearse Podcast, Episode 15, Faces Mask. In this episode, we explore the concept of the mask and the many masks a human being inevitably wears in their lifetime. And now, let's join our host, Zachary Murdoch, along with our special guest, world champion DJ, producer, and artist, Josh Winkler, aka DJ Clever. Face is mask. We are what we pretend to be, so we must be careful what we pretend to be. Touché, Mr. Vonnegut, touché. Mask, a covering for all or part of the face worn as a disguise or to amuse or terrify other people. Mask, a covering made of fiber or gauze and fitting over the nose and mouth to protect against dust air pollutants, or viruses. Mask, a hollow model of a human head worn by ancient Greek and Roman actors, both mask and megaphone, and the origin of the word persona or person, that through which God speaks. Mask, conversely a device to hide an individual's character or feelings. Mask, Tracing the word back through time, you find root connections to buffoon, witch, to blacken, darken, or my favorite, dark cloud before the rain comes. Initially, that confused me, but then I realized that the cloud is masking the rain that's on its way. The rain is coming, my friends. The storm is here. We must all face the rain alone, Umbrellas won't protect us, and neither will beliefs. We are the rain, in another form. It seems we have forgotten. The entire ocean in a drop, as Rumi sang. And when our rain releases, what will grow, I wonder? A line from Jesus comes to mind. If a seed goes into the ground and dies, then it will grow. A close family member of mine has severe respiratory health issues. I wear a mask to keep them safe. I don't know the truth about COVID. I am not qualified to say anything about it. All I know is that it is a true trickster's gift, a perfect seesaw opportunity to find balance and to hold the opposing tensions without needing to choose. When I find my rabid wolf clawing desperately at a mask, I do my best to remember you are another me. I feel a great rage well up when someone judges me for wearing a mask, especially when they smugly claim to be spiritual and evolved. Beneath my rage is grief. In Chinese medicine, they say grief is held in the lungs. The world is heavy with grief. No wonder it has been so hard to breathe. One of my teachers, Michael Mead, says symptoms point toward their opposite. In other words, if the world is full of conflict and polarity, these symptoms are pointing at unity. The more we ignore the symptoms, the louder they become. It's pretty loud right now. It makes me want to hide. I see all the perspectives. I disagree and agree. I feel torn, pulled. Every day I change my mind. I'm tired of debating. Language falls short. I don't care what you think or feel. I don't care what I think or feel either. I cherish melody, humor, grief, metaphor, creation. All the masks have their place. I want to wear them all. I just don't want to forget that I'm wearing them anymore. I don't want to identify with the masks any longer. And as my father said, maybe the most ridiculous mask to wear is no mask. It seems likely that what humans call God even wears a mask. Perhaps hoping 
to be discovered. And before we move on to the other amazing elements of the show, our special guest, the original song, I want to read a little poem that I wrote or something came through me and wrote itself for this episode, Faces Mask. Thespian undress, not a question, a command. The costume of the flesh is itching what I truly am. We've met, but you don't know me. To the peasant, I'm a queen. To the king, I am a lowly beggar, never in between. Unless your heart is shattered into infinity form, I will not exist to you and you will not be born. I am Abraxas. Word up. All right, y'all. Moving on. Much love. The theme song for today's episode is Foolish Boy, created by Kevin Joseph, Zachary Murdoch, and myself, Prospect Lux. When elements all collide, skeletons hold me, I'm you. Infinity multiplied, divided by me, playing the four, like zero times two. No hero, I'm who you know Nobody Your body won't touch this That's the toughest part Cut this Puppet yarn of Woven heart, yeah Wish I had a way that I could possess you When I try, I lose the flame Too much, grew up, too fast, lose us, gold teeth, no toothbrush, rusting in the rain, foolish, yeah, boy, <laughs> what you gonna do about it, all alone, feeling overcrowded, please, get the fuck off me, but when you're gone, I feel oh so awfully blue. Good color, misunderstood other Stand beneath falling for rain cover But it's all in vain because the rain's underneath my skin Now it's leaking through the pen, wonder What will grow from the flooding of this pain's water What we'll know from the muttering of crazed author If anything or better to be blank paper A pauper, yours truly the fool For this episode, we have a very special creation from my man, Chaotic Steel. Drop that. Faces mask. Take it back to the times of the naked ass. Hidden is the identity of the man of the century. Do I see negativity? Honestly, it depends for me. Depends on the time of the season. Is Venus in retrograde? Do we look to God to look upon the mess he made? But we ain't much more so of some live reporters. Daily blogs with tales of magicians and heavy hoarders of memories, cordless amenities. For the horde, tell the enemy any alliance formed against me shall collapse. Like the sands of time, I'm back with a sharper mind than a duller knife. Love is the motive, it's time I showed you mine. Life. Faces mask. I cover mine to block the blinding light that is my very being. The son of God before the son of man, I'm beginning to see it clearly. Clear intentions call for clear inventions. Creation is our purpose, make sure you create with purpose. Fun won't hurt us, but delaying the inevitable is sure to surface. The roots of evil, cut off the weeds though, beware the weevils. I'm a mega beedro in a world of seagulls. You loiter at the beach gliding for scraps. I loiter in my room, worried about rap. Which words do I use? Will my next mask be scarier? Told Zack, faces mask is on track. The more work, the merrier. Destroying beats with the lariat. White stallions from my chariots. Carry it. Carry your weight through this war. I ain't saving it. Save your excuses for the many Medusas who will stare at you for so long they themselves turn to stone. Reverse psychology on you non-thinkers. I'm great to the bone. Solid is my core. Ten toes down when I walk in through the door. 
you jerks off map, worried about my last tug, ain't hearing much music with this radio in the bathtub, thoughts of offing myself has drastically gone down, nine months almost up, call me father time now. Enough judgment, I forgive you for nothing, because nothing was ever done to me, rushing towards my inner peace. Me versus me as my enemy has taught me how to balance out the chaos with serenity. Speaking of identity, face is mask. I take my mask off just to face the past and say, hate don't last. I'm here, now, forever, wicked. Welcome to the Pinkhurst Podcast. Today, we have a very special human being sitting in the chair across from me, Josh, a.k.a. Clever. Um, I, from what I know of you, would say you are an artist, DJ, but also an all-around creative soul. Is there any other masks or things you, you would like to announce as some of your descriptions? Uh father father journey seeker yeah um yeah perfect well welcome to the show and thank you for being here man thank you for having me man really so to begin as we arrive into the space can you please tell us a little bit about yourself and where you find yourself today on your journey uh Joshua Nathan Winkler, 45 years old, from Atlanta, Georgia. Um, I found turntables when I was 15 years old. And uh, yeah, um, as soon as I found turntables, that was everything to me. Hmm. Um, You know, before that, skated hardcore. I thought Hmm. maybe I'd be at least amateur, you know, But that didn't happen. Found turntables, percussion. My father's a blues musician. Mm. So um, that was always in the house. And uh, my first drum kit was, I think I was three years old. And uh, so, yeah, always driven to percussion. Mm. And, um, yeah, found turntables. And I found the percussive element of that, being able to control sound. And that was it. Um, And my journey began then. Um, Didn't really know what I was doing other than just sort of emulating uh, DJs from video, Yo MTV Raps, uh, Rap City, or, you know, back in those days when they made videos with DJs. Um, And just did a lot of studying Hmm. and always wanted to learn that art and how to get better in controlling sound and. Um, yeah, I just skip school, go back to the house, practice, um, and, um, got better, got better, set some goals Hmm. and, uh, actually I'd say turntable saved my life really, um, came up in an environment of people that started to like to party a lot, sell drugs, do drugs because they didn't have that art form, that release, um, skating was the thing. And then when you get to a certain age, you start drinking beer, you start partying. Um, and I got lucky. I was focused on this art form that nobody else was doing. Hmm. Like I didn't grow up around it. And, uh, yeah, they saved my life and, um, eventually started meeting some other people that were, scratching Mm. and um became friends practiced together and um yeah i had some goals of being a world champion Mm. and achieved those goals um later on in life and yeah i mean um it it's uh made me a great life and i've abused it and it's kind of worked i wouldn't i can't blame it (laughs) it hasn't worked against me i worked against it and started doing things that I never thought I'd be doing. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I guess uh, yeah, turntables have, I don't know, they're, ev- they're still everything to me. Hmm. Yeah. Um, Been the flying saucers that delivered you here. 
pretty much literally. Yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Um, and um, yeah, they've taken me around the world, mm. um, introduced me to people, cultures, and uh, uh, I love it. Yeah. Man. So such a cool response because I don't think on all, you know, so far in all the interviews that I've heard anyone speak of their craft or their tool the way you just did, mm. right? I haven't heard that. And it's really beautiful. And it just reminds me of kind of, I guess, a more indigenous perspective that everything is alive, you know? And so the spirit of the turntables, like one of your best friends and your your guardians. and They most definitely were. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's kind of weird to say. Uh, I mean, I, I was so hardcore disciplined. I didn't party. Uh, relationships were kind of, I really didn't, I weren't, I, I mean... Uh, my sex life wasn't all that uh, vibrant due totally. to my discipline, and my, I didn't want things getting in the way. Um, not, I mean, it sounds kind of militant, but I was very militant. I had a goal; I wanted to be the best, and I didn't want to plateau. I've I seen people that. plateau with their instrument or with certain things in their life, mm. and that was my motto: I'll never plateau. I'll never even out. I'm always on this trajectory. But I plateaued at, after, you know, a couple decades of it and the ups and downs of life, really. Of and so, but I don't know. Uh, yeah, I guess technically I plateaued with techniques and learning stuff. But it, there were there was other learning things going on. Yeah. Um, and I think we were talking in the car too that like to go backwards is is essential in order to go forwards. Or the quote that I chose from the Jesus idea of like, if a seed has to go in the ground and die, and then it can grow. So so sometimes I think in our culture, we're go, go, go. If you're not moving, if you're not posting, then it's a plateau. But I've found mm. that going under the earth, taking that time, you know, anyway, not to get all metaphorical on it, but it seems like you're by no means plateauing at all and continuing to bloom, which can sometimes appear to be different than what, you know, society. I appreciate that. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, well, that's like another, that's like life. I mean, um, but you're I, saying I, techniques, you were saying, like, yeah, well, terms. no, I, I, um, so there's like the tech, technical aspect and all of that, but then I did so much of that and so caught up in, in trying to be or becoming humbly saying the best. Yeah. Um, I didn't live life. Yeah. I was like caught up in this achieve, achieve, achieve. And, um, so, but then, yeah, uh, I guess fairly recently is where I had to change some things, replant, you know, like for real, mm -hmm. get in the soil. Yeah. Um, so, uh, but that's a whole other expression of production and digging deep within producing music, arrangement, mm. songwriting, and et cetera, where I'm not necessarily using turntables anymore, but I'm using the discipline, the elements, and blah, blah, blah of, of, S sound sculpting, you yes. know. Uh, so it was all for a reason, I guess. I love you know? it, 100%. Thank you. I'm 35 years old. I'm a married man with a son. Today is Halloween. Looking back, I realize I have worn many different masks, personalities, identities, groups that I ran with, whatever. I don't remember when I first put one on or... or felt the need that I had to identify. I, I do vaguely remember, like there's a photo of me with my arms on to the rain on the beach when I was, what, four? So what, however old. And I vaguely remember this time when I was the mysterious being of just being a being, you know what I mean? And didn't have to say, I'm this. Obviously you're Zach or you're the name people call you, but I still felt like vague in a free way. And I don't remember when I first put on the oh, I like this and I don't like that, or this is my, you know, preference politically, not that I have one, but but you know what I mean, the masks. Um, so yeah, I don't remember when I put it on and I don't remember when I started to peel them off, which is a lot about what the work I do with this, you know, my friends here is removing masks. Does that mean anything to you? Can you relate to that? And then... I guess we'll just mush these two questions together, but what are some of the different masks or roles and what are the ones you've removed? Anything out of there. That's a big 
kind of world of questions, but. Well, uh, as soon as you ask that, uh, ego is, was my mask, I guess. And I didn't know this until I really, well, I was, well, I guess there's different layers of like ego. Um, always a humble person, mm. always, always humble. But I didn't realize there's like different types of ego. Mm. And um, I guess I'll just kind of get my darkest, my, my, my heaviest mask, mm. my thickest mask was probably the, uh, the last, uh, where are we at? Almost 2023. I'd say when I started working with a particular artist started supporting a particular artist and um was um introduced to this world of working together mm. and um it was a different type of element uh that I wasn't it was kind of foreign to me it came natural mm. but it was a it was like a, a two two man team Prior to that, it was all, it was a one man team. Hmm. But then, okay, I go back. Uh, so it was a one man team for years and years and years. I'm, I was my own soldier and everything. But then I I I did I, I accomplished some goals, and I got I became part of one of uh, uh, two or three most influential DJ crews in the world were called the Allies. Mm. The Allies was in, based in uh, Miami, New York City, Montreal, and Atlanta, Georgia, which was me. And they were all, all world champions, mm. national world champions, you know. And uh, so um, I was, you know, I was blessed, honored, gifted with the acknowledgement, and they saw things in me, and they brought me into the crew. So I guess I started to develop a mask then. Hmm. Um, and which was, I, sh I shit, I got to like, com I've got to compete or I got to raise my bar even more. I thought I was already doing that. And so I started getting more thicker skin with well, socially and competitively. And I don't know, just, um, it just a mask started to start mm. or started to happen. Mm. Didn't know it really, and um, so that started in uh, two thousand. Um, and then I would t I started touring the world. Uh, getting, like I we were sh conversing earlier in the mm -hmm. car, uh, my music taste started developing. I didn't want to just showcase like be the magician that had to be so on point. If you mess up one little time, and especially back then, it was all about the just the needle. Mm. Like the needle skipped a groove, your whole routine is then you have to start, you know, kind of start over. Or you recover, but it's not flawless like you did earlier, which was <laughs> amazing, by the way. Um, so uh, there was a lot of pressure. Sure. So I wanted to just party, and yeah. what I mean by party, meaning like playing more up tempo music, getting into a club atmosphere where people are celebrating dance. And, you know, having a good time releasing instead of just nerding out and people clapping and going crazy for this one little part of your routine that they saw in the videos and they are, you know, that they nerd out on, right? Mm -hmm. So it was just so technical. I was over it. Uh, I have a point here. The point is, is, um, oh, getting, uh, graduating to more of the party aspect. Um, now I'm playing festivals, raves, clubs, being flown all around the globe mm. and being a part of these venues that are historically like respected and like, dang, I, I'm here, you know? So, and there's a lot of stuff that comes with it. Um, and, uh, mass was getting thicker and thicker and heavier and, um, uh, Drinking, doing not drugs. I, drugs wasn't never my thing. Smoked a lot of pot, mm. but drinking. I guess my father. Oh, I can't. I'm not blaming my dad, but <laughs> he was an alcoholic, and I was always scared to drink mm. due to I saw how what it did to him, mm. and um, so eventually I started drinking, get that liquid courage for social, and and then like I shared earlier, the discipline with my craft, mm. I was a little, I wasn't a little like 
weird, but when it came to women, kind of um, uh, uh, insecure, mm -hmm. right? So that helped with things. And I found myself like going crazy with that stuff mm -hmm. and uh, with everything, the, the, the notoriety. Uh, the oh, moment, oh, getting the moment. caught up, yeah, yeah. you know? And um, so um, anyway, I kind of like self destroyed that or what are they they um sabotage I, yeah 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 which is another that goes i mean that's a whole childhood thing of some things that happened to me as a child sure. that i suppressed hmm. that later came up in my life um hmm. Uh, and i didn't realize it until later on in life because i compartmentalized things I was, I was like the king of it, hmm. you know, putting things in these boxes, moving on, discipline, focus, achieve, uh, re repeat. Yeah. Um, and then once I started drinking and then I started socializing more and the attention from chicks and all of that, this other side of me started coming out. And uh, I wouldn't even call that a mask. That was like some w weird reality of dealing with the abuse and um, of, I, yeah, no count, like not being able to converse with people or like share my story because no, I mean, so it was sexual abuse. Mm. And like, who do you talk to type thing? I couldn't talk to my homies. They would, I mean, I was, well, scared, embarrassed, felt like I was to blame. I mean, so deep, you don't talk about those type of things with people or your friends or whatever. We talk turntables. We talk about what we did last night and who we banged or whatever, whatever. And so um, I found myself self-sabotaging situations out of this truth that I, I, things started to happen to me because of my past, alcohol, and not knowing how to deal with certain things. Um, so um, those opportunities started to fade away because I would act out hmm. when I would get blackout wasted and I didn't understand what was going on because I'm perfectly fine hmm. in a regular day thing. But when I get blackout drunk, I would do things and say things or just get questionable. And um, <laughs> people, it scared people. I put myself in, uh, I guess, like suicidal situations. And, but I would never do that on a, you know, regular day. You know, mm. I'm not going to stand in front of a train or chill out on top of a high rise, like with my, you know, just like put myself in these, just takes one little thing and it's a wrap. And, um, yeah, I, uh, I started scaring people, so my opportunities started slipping away. Like, mm. Jock Clev's a liability, man. Mm. You know, my booking agent was kind of asking me some things, and I'm like, I don't remember that. I don't remember, you know. I, so, uh, so luckily I saved up a bunch of money, mm. which I'm really good at, mm. and um, I was able to sustain for a while. And I ended up doing some things in Atlanta, hurting myself, and um, woke up. My daughter was out here in Los Angeles. I woke up the next day from the hospital and uh, said, I need to get out. I need to stop what I'm doing. You know, alcohol is killing me. Hmm. Uh, and stopped, got out here. And um, I guess fast forward a little bit. I started working with this individual, mm -hmm. this, this uh, element that I wasn't used to doing. Usually it's DJ stuff. And then I started working with this vocalist. Hmm. Um, and we went way back before this vocalist became who, who he ended up being. Hmm. And, but there was always like a, a very, very high frequency confidence. I will use the term loosely. Uh, he knew what he was, hmm. you know, from day one, oh, man, I mean, the stories, are, that's a whole other, that's a whole other podcast, yeah. you know, of like that. Yeah. But I'll just, I don't want to like take no, it. No, we can do, yeah. That, you know. I think this is today where we want our intention together was 
you and you. But, yeah, but that but can get into the mask. Yeah, no, exactly. No, sorry, this, for, like an elongated answer it, for no. the uh, the question. So, Thank you. Uh, the ego. Um, I, I I found myself fast forwarding to 2013 up into 19, uh, developing an ego in, um, that wasn't cool. Hmm. And it ruined my family, ruined me, um, due to selfishness. Hmm. Uh, and alcohol, I started drinking again and on my high horse, never think I was ever better than anybody. So I had this crazy contrast of being super humble, but also internally this ego, this thing. And um, so, yeah, e I get ego is what my mask sure. was. And uh, I found myself the last couple, two and a half years dealing with stripping that away and being as honest with myself than I've ever been in my entire life. Hmm. And Beautiful. that's a whole other awakening yeah I, th I mean it feels like with the, the gravity of this show and you know the art that we do the music and how we came together through Ordinary Magic the song which I can't wait to hear what you do for that yeah, one yeah yeah super stoked um, on that that you know we're family I think the whole world is one family but that there's like a returning so I'm just honored to know you and I hope that we have many different you know expressions and talks and so yeah, I think um, that more than answered it in a really beautiful, powerful way for that. And I'm right there with you, you know, just ha w racing ahead, focusing on mastery of craft. I'm going to deal with that stuff in the future. Finally caught up to me, still r ran away from it, caught up again, still ran away, caught up again, you know, and each time more and more so learning to, you know, he says, in, in his own words, I'll say it differently, that the the crucifixion of Christ is the ultimate symbol of vulnerability, which is the true superpower. You know, so it's really hard to be maskless, even if that's a thing, because I think there's always another mask below the mask, maybe. But uh, maybe a healthier mask or, or, or closer something to that your yeah. Is yeah, you know, so, a thinner mask. I, I kind of see things in weight like and color that. and whatnot. And so yeah, maybe something that's way more transparent. Yeah. I you like know, that. rather than hiding behind. Well, I speaking of masks and then we'll move forward, is um I mentioned that my face flushes a lot, especially when I've been working hard. It's like a sign of my nervous system being out of balance. Um, less so of what I ingest, weirdly. It's not the coffee or having a beer or a cigarette, it's actually stress that makes me flush. Um and you said, Dad, to me one day, I was so embarrassed because I turned bright red and then you're with people and you know it's getting worse because you're aware of them, so you get redder. Mm. And you said something like, it's actually a really endearing sign to, for someone who blushes. It shows that they're like a sweet, genuine person. And that reminds yeah. me of the thin mask of like, if you wear your mask thin or, or your heart on the sleeve, it can feel really uncomfortable, but it's also really beautiful and important. From what I've learned and conversing with your dad in a very short amount of time, your dad certainly has the most positive way of looking at things. So with that said, what a great um, analogy or, yeah. or or truth, really, to is. have that insecurity that you may have or dealt with or whatever, to Dealing see it with, like yeah. that, that's a... Power, I mean, it's huge. Uh, turning something negative, maybe, or whatever, into a superpower. You know? Alchemy. Yeah, yes, yeah, alchemy. Yeah, I love it. So let's see. This is kind of vague. I, I think one of my masks is wanting to always be different, which is ridiculous because in and of itself, that, that's like a resistance of just being a human, I think. But I, you know, people say things like, where do you imagine yourself to be in five years? What is your blood? And I get shut the, f I hate that stuff, man. A, I think it's disrespectful to God somehow to try to tell God where you're going to be in five years. But, well, there is a thing of a five year plan, no, right? I, you know, I people kind of like, it. I'm an asshole. That's what I'm saying. I'm an asshole. I'm a pretentious <laughs> poet asshole who's just like, <laughs> no, but there is. And, and that, that's my point. That's one of my matters. Or not even a question you, but, it, you know, it, it kind of is a thing. And you're right. Like, who's to say what's going to happen when you walk out well, that's across the, the street, joke. you know? That's the old joke is do you want to know how to make God laugh? Tell him her your plans. That's the joke. 
So, you know, leaving room, I have intentions. I have, you know, I want to create, I want to be a good dad. I want to, whatever it may be, but I try not to get too specific. Like I need a house with the thing and the boom. Cause then it's like, eh. point being this question almost borders on a cheesy question to me, but I'm going to ask it. And if it speaks to you. So all it is, is why do you create what do you hope to achieve with your music and art and what are you relaying and um uh, cre- cre- creating is it's a it's a necessity it's not even i have to mm-hmm. cuz i have nothing else mm. like i i realized in this whole pandemic thing um it saved my life mm. I mean, I was always creative anyway. Me too. But when I when I when I was observing other people via having short little conversations with them in real life or or on the device, I saw people freaking out. Hmm. You know, um, I mean, we're talking. You know, certain maybe like uh, people who are accomplished in with numbers, math, successful. Wall Street type people or whatever, mm. and but they don't they don't know what to do. You know they have too much too much time on their hands, or they just they, their daily routine has been broken up. Uh, so f- being a creative, um, twelve hour, hours out of my day, always or, or more anyway, um, it's a necessity, man. It's therapy. Uh, it allows me to um, be creative. Like yeah. it, it, it's. Um, it's food, mm-hmm. you know. Um, um, even if like, <laughs> I mean, it. You, let's say you knock one out of the park, like you get a track signed, or you, or or, or you win the lottery. I like to say, like uh, something becomes huge. One track, yeah, like a placement, a big placement, place. yeah. On a, I mean, these days, what TikTok or, or maybe yeah. I shouldn't say that, but a, a, a platform, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and um but how many tracks did you write in order just to achieve that? Yeah, I mean totally. hundreds, yeah. thousands, right? If yeah. you're like really digging and digging and going, going. Yeah. And and everybody just sees that one thing, right? Yeah. So um uh what's my point? Point is is Why uh, you create and just house. yeah, it's yeah. it's food, man. It's it's food. Uh, if I don't, I feel like I didn't accomplish anything. Even though I don't need to accomplish anything, I don't need to be acknowledged for the thing. Yeah. It does for me. Yeah. Um and it's then funny the- you say food, and I don't want to cut you off, but earlier I told you I had an interaction with someone who said poetry is a luxury. Sometimes you really need to get back to reality, Zach, with this kind of tone, which I'm very familiar with people trying to, you know, they'll come to the show on Saturday. Oh my God, you're amazing. Then Monday comes, they're like, you really need to get your fucking life together, bro. Right? That's the vibe. I'm, uh, so, and in, in this thing, this interaction, this person said, you know, poetry is a luxury. It's for the 1%. It's not more important than water. And I said this thing, I disagree, sort of. I mean, I, I, I don't even know why we have to compare the two, but I mentioned something that Kanye said, and I know Kanye is all over the place, but I think a broken clock is right twice a day applies to that. No disrespect to Kanye. Maybe he's brilliant, but he, some truth shines through. And he said something that he's quoting anyway, so it doesn't matter where it came from, but it was like knowledge, reading knowledge, all that is more powerful than food and water because it can teach you how to get food and water. I said that to this person, which is, was the wrong thing. That wasn't even my point. Cause that, and he got upset and said, I got to put on his headphones. Like it was a whole thing. But you just said that about food. And so not to go on a tangent, but this morning I wrote this little poem because I agree with you. And it's so hard to, to speak to that, to people who aren't understanding that really. And this poem is, I don't know what it is. If it's good or bad, it doesn't matter. It's called Wise Ass with Two Money Signs. Today, a man told me that poetry is a luxury and that I should come back to reality, whatever that is. My wise ass response, you can eat a piece of paper and it may even keep your hunger at bay, but good luck trying to read your hamburger. My heart's response, life without poetry, music, melody, art, illogical, gibberish, and magic is just survival. And I would rather starve than simply survive. In fact, I would be starving. You just can't see that body with your physical eyes. 
So it's just nice that you said that because I needed that. I didn't need it because I, I like talking to myself these days and I have a good relationship with not needing approval, but it's a nice attaboy or reflection of like, it is fucking food, man. For some of us at least, and I would argue for all of us, however you're consuming it, that there is a malnutrition there would be a malnutrition of, of the invisible body if you were not receiving art, whatever the fuck that is, in whatever form you do, because it's everywhere. This whole world is, you know, sorry to go on. But. Oh, man, you're on it. Yeah. All right, I guess I'll move forward. Um, you emanate kindness, creativity, intelligence, and respect. Your heart feels gigantic and you seem to wear it on your sleeve. I have often found that people with these qualities have a hard time existing in this society and world. How do you balance all of these energies and protect your optimism and love? That's very, that's a question, yeah? That's very kind of you. That, that's like, dude, uh, thank you very Since much. Since I was, um, became aware of you, I've no, I've felt that from you. You emanate this other. I appreciate world. that. Yeah. Thanks, really, thanks, thanks. Really. I mean, if it's projected out there, and I, pretty honest person, I'm, you know, thank you. Uh, yeah, that's, man. that's that's kind of you. Um. Uh. So the question: uh, How do I the deal with? The question is: um, How do you? protect that light because i've found as a sensitive person who has some of those i think oh. i have some of those traits how do you keep that alive when i feel like the world is often poking at us and pushing hmm. us like the conversation i had you today. just keep going like i don't know like i'm first and foremost like i mean that's so kind of you it's almost like a lot there's a lot of pressure within that uh <laughs> but i'm like nobody right and i when i say nobody like i'm just just a human being right like yeah. i'm no better than anybody else no worse than anybody else. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm just, I'm no better than anybody. So I don't know. Yeah. Like, I just, um, you just keep trucking, you know? I don't know. Like, just keep being kind. I mean, I'm I'm in traffic. I might not be so kind. You know <laughs> I mean? You see another side of me, right? <laughs> but, um, yeah, man. Like, I think it, it just, I, I remember things. You know, humble, being humble. Yeah. Which is, uh, and I'm grateful for that aspect, man, because I've I've worked with human beings that aren't so humble, and it's in the, it's like in the DNA or something. So I think like how I was raised, mm. um, had a amazing mom. I mean, I, she's still around, and she's amazing, and implanted some things in me, and educated me with some humbleness. And my dad, he's amazing as well. Mm. And uh, so I think um, I was. I like to say I was raised right, although I was, there was some other stuff that ha well, wasn't with them. But my parents were amazing. I think I was raised humbly saying right and uh, and gave me some quality, instilled some quality in me. And so just be kind, be cool. Yeah. I mean, not be taken advantage of, yeah. you know, like I'm no dumbass. Yeah. But I, 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 want, I treat people the way that I'd like to be treated. And that sounds lame. No, but it's it is the absolute truth. Like, um, my I uh, what are the empath? Is yeah, that it? Yeah. I'm very uh, I don't empathic, empathetic, em empathic. Yeah, very yeah. much. Energy's a thing, and not to get all into that, but um, uh, I feel people's like people radiating energy and whatnot. You know, there is great energy, and then there's like some not so great energy. How's Brad's energy doing right now? Brad back here, yeah, he's a, he's awesome. Yeah, he's chilling. He's just a, I always tease a blue globe of he's yeah he's in his own. Um, so yeah, man, just <laughs> no, I love I love that because I don't know if you're aware of this, but like I said, my mom's a therapist in her own way. My wife is a therapist, a depth psychologist, and recently I learned the phrase highly sensitive. It's a personality type. Apparently, twenty percent of the world are. My mm -hmm. wife, my son, and I definitely am. I didn't know what that meant, but looking back, it makes sense why I drank, smoked, did the things I did. And now that I've begun to heal my nervous system, get in touch with things like noticing how my face turns red if I'm stressed, like these are signs my body's communicating. I realize like tomorrow, whether I have a beer later or whatever, I'm going to be hung over energetically from today. I know that. Mm -hmm. It happens sure. when I create this way. So... 
I would imagine you're a highly sensitive being. And I think it's a superpower that needs to be respected and needs to be honored and does not necessarily, you know, function well if you were trying to compare yourself or be like what a lot of, not to keep talking about society, but, you know, the culture we're in that's giving us these instructions of how to be a good, productive being. I don't think that really works for highly sensitive people. Mm. I am a cancer. Mm. So I... I learned, I guess, like, we're sensitive people, right? July 4th, 1977. Right. And uh, I don't know if that's... A, is that a thing? I mean, is that, you know... I mean, yeah, I'm is, a Sagittarius. I'm are you, do you live up to that? Definitely. Okay. So I don't know if that's part deeper, of it, too. Yeah, the year, I think, matters. The natal charts. I think there's some... If you're with the right person, there's there's definitely some real stuff. And maybe not at a certain level. I think it's both. I don't know. And I've learned... I'll share this with you guys, man. Yeah. And maybe you got... Uh, maybe Dad has some insight on this. Yeah. 77. I learned um, that's... Uh, and well, you shall, have. Well, I... Yeah. yeah. I, well, gave me another reason to put something on my I face, I guess. Yeah. Uh, but no, it really does have like, um, so 77 uh, is an angelic number. Yeah. It's like an angel number, but literally, and I've already seen it like twice today. Wow. Every day, every day for like the last several years, I see the number 77. Mm. If it's one time, which is to like 10 times. Wow. So 77 is always, I'm always seeing it, man. Like That's every cool. day, like, does that happen to you guys for any number at all? Yeah. Yeah? Okay. Yeah? Okay. And I, I kind of question myself, like, what does that mean, man? Like, what I want, I want something positive to come out of it, you know? I think uh, it can be a good little wink. I think those things are winks. And I, I went crazy looking at signs, and I think about the woman in the parking lot who was reading. There was a woman who appeared to be, you know, imbalanced like too far gone and she was like writing down every license plate and muttering to herself so i've almost been that woman not quite but i think it's a very slippery slope where you take a sign don't overthink it too much mm. use it as like a little yeah that's cool or you know you start to find a language but holding it all lightly as you say signs are simply signposts words are simply signposts pointing at the mystery if that makes sense in this context i think we get fixated on the sign and we forget it's still the mystery. Like we're not supposed to know just like maybe you're on the right path. Keep it going. Keep that's it what's up. And that's, what's up. That's how I, well, God, man, I have had the, uh, that's a <laughs> that's I, part two. I, well, well, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, 77 are numbers. And I don't know. I just wanted to bring that up. No, just I appreciate we're, you. We're conversing. And no, I, I love this it. This is the platform to share stuff. hundred percent. hundred percent. I appreciate you. I'm an 86 child. Um. All right. <sighs> what has depression taught you? Um. You can say pass. Obviously. No, no, no. I'd like to get into that. If th th you ask no, the we, question, no, I would love. And this I is a podcast. Yeah, let's ride, baby. Uh. So uh, I guess another one of those, well, um, well, so here, so lately um, I've been dealing with um, uh, um, so my change, my personal changes has, uh, mm, so uh, work, right? Yeah. I'm not working as much as I would like to, or like I used to work. Yeah. So I have not, I wouldn't say more time on my hands, but I'm like by myself a lot more right now yeah. um, and creating. But then I can only create so much. And when you create, for me, I've always got this, I dream mm. or I manifest or I have a goal. I have these things where I know, I know what I want. Mm. They're just not tangible yet. They're just not here because I'm reinventing. Mm. It's that whole rebirth thing, giving up, shedding the skin like a snake or whatever. Again, it's probably the lame analogy, but I, I've no. shed it and still shedding. But um, n not in a relationship. I don't have a partner. Mm. I had a partner and that, so I'm used to, okay, used to praise, mm. right? Um, everything working out, attention, mm. having, and this sounds sick, but I would have like several chicks mm. on deck. Yeah. Oh, God, that sounds lame. No, that sounds terrible. No. But I could admit that. So, you know, having sex and experiencing short term stimulation was always there. Mm. But I cut all that out. Mm. I just cut it out because I knew it was the bad fat. 
bad mm. food. It was just bad. Ego, it ties into a lot more than just the sensation of the act, right? For me. Mm. So I had to cut all that out and um, change some habits re- and create some new, better habits. Mm. Uh, and with all of this honesty for myself has come heavy load of solitude, being by myself, a lot of overthinking. I overthink a lot. And I've been hit with the heaviest amount of depression I've ever dealt in my entire life. Mm. Even when I went through my abuse as a child, it didn't really affect me. At least I thought. Mm. I compartmentalized. I was a king of that. So I'd always just kind of put it away. And I still don't blame the people that did things to me as a child because I forgive and I forgave and forget, forgive and forgive, whatever, you know, because I don't, I mean, that's a whole other hardcore thing to deal with. Mm. So I get, I, I forgave mm. and that's helped tremendously. Um, but now I found myself this year, this year has been really hard for me. Um, but I've, I've literally, I mean, I've, I've heard stories. I've seen movies of people not getting out of bed. I've heard mm. people say, you know, I've been in bed for a day or two or whatever, I've stayed in bed for a month, mm. um, uh, several, uh, several week, uh, a couple months ago. It started out with like a day. I just I gave up on mm. life, mm. straight up. Mm. Overthinking, no opportunities, mm. hard to go out and socialize. I, you know, going back to Atlanta, like making friends. I mean, it's like whoa, I got to do all this over again. <laughs> I've kind of so I found myself right, mm. or I've 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 tapped into that who I am. I don't want to go out and drink. Mm. I don't want to go out and find chicks for all the wrong reasons. Mm. Um, I don't want. I'm not a. I don't want to do drugs. I I don't need that shit in my life. I have. I want the best form of me. So I fit. I'm scared to go out. Fear. Mm. Fear is another thing. Mm. Fear is a mask for me. Mm. Uh, and I never had fear. I, I was fearless, mm. but it put me in so many crazy situations that I abused. Um, so depression, staying in bed for a week, mm. a month, mm. like scary shit, mm. contemplating my life. Mm. And I'm like, what am I doing? Mm. Why, what has happened to myself? Mm. So, um... Idle hands, what do they say? Idle hands. Devil's something. And, and I found myself, even though I'm working, mm. but my goals aren't coming to me. I'm not getting the emails or the phone calls of the opportunities and blah, 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 or whatever. So depression starts rolling in, man. And uh, so what have I learned from it? It's fucking scary shit, yeah. you know, is what it is. It's there. I acknowledge it. Um. I learned from depression. I don't want to have it. I don't want to, I don't want depression. Well, it sounds like you, you, it's taught you some valuable things such as you don't want to go do certain things, right? You don't want to go out and drink. You don't want to do all these things. So during that time, it seems like depression was showing you what you don't want to do because you could have overridden it maybe and gone out. I could have been the old me, Yeah, that's which what I, I mean. don't want anymore. So it sounds like depression, like I was saying in the car, and I'm not trying to put words in your mouth, mm. but, but from our exchanges it sounds like those monsters depression being one of them that hound us really are slowing us down to say hey you've forgotten who you really are and what the world wants to give you and so you will have to feel this because i like you compartmentalized all my shit and then eventually it caught up to me now i try to experience my deaths and rebirths in the same day like if I have a really disappointing thing i try to just feel it right then i don't want to push it down anymore because if that shit piles up then I get knocked out for a year next time or I have to break my ankle or I have to lose my best friend or whatever it may be. You're good. Thank you. So it sounds like that that's what it's been teaching you. Um, but I, again, I don't want to say things on your behalf, but just reflecting what I've heard. I'm still learning. Like, cause I got to go home tomorrow. Yeah. I go back to Atlanta tomorrow and I'm back in the cesspool of reality away from my kid and back to, all right, man, figure it out. So, uh, yeah, uh, 
I'm still learning. Yeah. It's ha- hasn't officially taught me anything. I'm still I think like, all of us in this room. You see that smile? That's the gold right there. You got you got new you friends over here, man, out here, and they're right on, thank you. His eyes say it all. I wish we could record the audio his eyes are making. <laughs> you get close enough to there, you probably <laughs> hear the flesh yeah. open and close. See the light, the light popping out. Thank you, Josh. I appreciate. Yeah, th- it. I mean, thank you. I've never. Uh, I mean, I need to take this opportunity to be like put it out there. I appreciate. You know, you. I've never shared the some of the things. Certainly not on this scale. Yeah. Uh, but um, I feel. Um, it has to happen. I have to, it's, it's my own therapy. I have to do it. And in turn, the healing we do, I think does ripple for others too. Hopefully. So um, we're, we have a few more if, yeah, you, yeah, if yeah. you're Keep up for it. Okay, yeah, cool. Brad, can you just text Josh and say we'll be done soon? Because I think, just let him know. Too, too many Joshes. Never enough. Or not man. enough. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was yeah. almost named Josh, right? Anyway, another, <laughs> another podcast. All right. Um, so, yeah, as we slowly near the end of this first walk together, you know, I think people say, what, I, what advice would you give to an up-and-coming artist? But I wanted to go deeper and say, what advice do you give to your daughter? Because I feel like that'll be more potent of, you know. That's a great, I mean, I'm dealing with that right now. She's 16 and dad's been gone for about two years. I mean, uh, uh, discipline, get on it, you yeah. know, put the phone away. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, yeah. you know, that's her problem. Um, get in uh, advice, get into something, focus and yeah, focus. Get with it. Uh, <laughs> discipline and and I mean, she's a an amazing human being. Mm. So she's already rad, and I don't say that like biasly. Mm. She is a very very kind, um, just awesome human being, mm. and so lucky mm. to. Ha- I mean, so proud of her. Uh, but sixteen, I'm seeing the teenager stuff. Hard. Girl, like okay, you know. Um, I, I never thought I was built, first of all, for a child. Because mm. uh, uh, dad dipping out when I was young, um, the, the uh, abuse, I was scared to have a child. Mm. Like, because statistically, parent issues, uh, the abuse that I went through, you um, you do weird shit to kids, yeah. right? Or you end up in jail for for something i mean like you're not society says like when you go through these gnarly traumatic experiences you are prone to do to give back to that evilness right and i'm i if i can say anything i'm very proud of myself Mm. for not giving into that statistic Mm. and uh so a uh, point is she's amazing, was scared to have a child, had one, uh, was f- blessed to have one. Mm. And she's awesome. So advice, focus, uh, and keep being you, keep being amazing, keep being a rad human being, and keep living life, but just focus. Put that damn phone away, you know? <laughs> Get rid of that. Just put it away. Yeah. Focus on your schoolwork or... And um, keep loving people like you do. I, I, I mean, really, I don't know. That's like, amazing. Advice to my child, like she's, she's ama- She's super rad. You know, yeah. very kind, very just. Yeah, she's beautiful. Yeah. yeah. So I, I, I no, that's know. great. But advice. I don't want to sound like that. Like, like, like. I don't know. That's what I have. You I know? love it. She's no, already kind of covered a lot of areas. Um, it's kind of like if you could go back in time, what would you say to the young you? To me, that's the same opportunity we have as fathers. It's like we get to... So when Rock has huge upsets, which he does, it brings up a lot in me. And my dad pointed out that maybe it's because I wasn't allowed to cry the same way he is, the way we're raising. Like some parents... Mm. Not, I don't know my scenario. It wasn't like whatever, but great childhood. 
but also trauma as a divorced kid and traveling all over the place. So I think his crying brings up some feeling where I feel like I can't handle it sometimes, like, mm. a, like an animal ancestor. And I can feel the part that has scared me. I've never done anything, but I can feel a part that's like, he needs to shut the fuck up. Like oh, wow. right now. Wow. Like he can't, huh. he'll go for two hours screaming snot, bread face. Sure. Point being is it's an opportunity, I think, to love that side of me again and meet that side again as well and try to walk through it the way I would want to. So I think you already said, because I would give similar advice to him and my young child, you know, keep being you, keep loving, put down that the, and you know, obviously the oh, phones you're, are you're, tools. You're in for it, dude. I know. You're in for it. Well, he still doesn't watch TV. We oh, wow. read all books. Cool, you know. cool. I'm on my phone all the time as the artist guy, so he definitely has like 50 fake phones, and he's always texting he's people in get Tokyo. One. It's gonna happen, yeah. man. You're you're in for it. I know. Uh, but it, what you you just shared, I was thinking like, um, again, I mean, I keep dipping back into my past, but I t- I took all these negative. I took my experience mm. and to enrich her mm. with the things that I did didn't wish that happened to me or did happen to me. Mm. So uh so now I, I have an immense I've always had an immense amount of patience mm. for her. Let her cry. Yeah. Let her feel. Um do it. You know, yeah. I mean if it gets unhealthy or if it's like for a reason, uh communication was always a big thing. Mm. Being patient, being present and conversing and just getting on that level of listening. Hmm. So that stuff, uh, so I think that may have helped. I'm going to take a little sliver of credit of why she's so rad. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> but yeah, you know, um, anyway. No, it's beautiful. Uh, Thank you. Yeah. So I'll say I'll cut myself off at two more tops because this was powerful and, yeah, um, I'll save some for the next one. So these interviews are for me at their core conversations with people I respect. In the spirit of that, is there anything you'd like to ask me? And don't need to, but sometimes it feels weird and imbalanced to just be grilling cats. Well, I've noticed or I've learned that you are a um, uh, um, proud father, mm. um, which is really awesome to see you know um how uh yeah like um how's being a father right because you're he how he's three he's three yeah, so you're three, three years half. in how yeah. is that dynamic change things for you personally and how do, uh yeah and how's being a father i mean I, you're you radiate with joyous radiation of being cool. a father but i i guess verbally or whatever. yeah i mean it's ha- funny because my dad so i'm also a proud son which i think is in a weird way even cooler to be a proud son because i think that can be hard sometimes i don't know the the father child dynamic in this society is seems somewhat broken like i take rock to a farm school in malibu twice a week little pod of people and I'm the only dad. I mean, occasionally there'll be a dad who pops in, but it's like I'm the only dad. And I, I'm, you know, it's just kind of interesting how the mothers have been delegated. That they're the ones who take care of kids, and and the dads are the hunters and the Wall Street wolves or whatever it may be. And I actually let, I do most of the cooking. Although Molly is a great cook, I do the laundry. Again, I'm not trying to blast her. She does all the things. But I love cooking. I love cleaning. I love doing laundry. I have motherly a motherly nature. I'm very in touch with that side. Um, But yeah, I guess in the vein of what rock has brought through, the joy has been tremendous and beyond words continues to be. But since you kind of already named that and felt that, I think what I'll, I'll say is more in the vein of that scary ancestor that came through and the pushing and the, Speaking of um, zodiacs, I'm Sagittarius, Molly's a Leo, he's an Aries. So apparently those are the three fire signs. So it's, the, but apparently three fire can make a harmony of fire, but it's very fiery in our house. And Aries are very stubborn and he is very, and you saw how he was with you. He want, He's like, I want to show him this. I want to show him this. He's very, you know, sleep has been hard, harder on Molly. Um, so just as my dad says, children are cannibals and they eat parts of you 
that maybe you no longer need or even the parts that you do maybe need, but I hope hopefully they're whittling you down to your essence. That's what I like to see it as. Like the Michelangelo statue, when he was asked how he made the David, he said that David was already in the block of marble and all he had to do is remove everything that wasn't David. And I love that idea, and mm. that's what rock, that's so. rock is my Michelangelo. Sure. And I'm David, becoming David more and more. Um, but yeah. Playfulness, we make up songs constantly, joy, teasing. Uh, and lastly, I'll just say that he's given me, he's helped me recover quickly the part of me that used to want to please everyone. I now have a clearer blade to say, nah, I can't do that. Or, you know, it's it's it's. I'm stronger in my discernment. I'm stronger in my choices and i'm much more protective of my time and where i used to have the luxury to go to a studio session for 12 hours and smoke we'd be super productive but smoke weed and chill and just create now it's like all right you have an hour and 15 minutes on wednesday at 3 15 to 4 40 4 30 and i got to go down and write a song in that time so i've become more of this like ninja and sure. also having to learn how to transition quickly from time management time management but even more like like i i mentioned i was in a mental hospital 10 years ago or so from a chemically induced psychosis i used to have trouble going all the way creative especially if there was alcohol and stuff like you know tapping into the unseen forces channeling albums prolific amounts of art like reading the signs my 77 seeing that shit everywhere but then i didn't know how to come back and what Rock has taught me, because I've, I've had a lot of depression and spent a lot of time in, in my bed because I, was, I felt like I can't be my creative beast anymore because it hurt me too much. But Rock has showed me that, in fact, I can totally be that creative beast, but I, I'm learning how to, you know, today we're going to make an entire song from scratch and shoot a music video and edit it tell people that they're like fuck is wrong with you and i'm like yeah i'm a i'm a full-blown art junkie and i've been doing this a long time when i go upstairs later and this is a unique holiday for me i have to to be able to have this much time to do it yeah ha happy halloween happy halloween <laughs> yeah, for real um so yeah i guess just learning how to go to that what some people might call lightning in a bottle or a manic space which is not but then feel it channel it write it sing it be it dance it let it wiggle out Take a breath, ground back, go be a dad, go change a diaper. And, it, and it's actually, although it's hard, is such a blessing. And that's why I like doing laundry and being a dad, because otherwise I would have spun out. Mm. So I feel like in some ways he's my rock. His name's Rock. Um, but he's also, you know, a balloon in his own right, and I'm his rock. So something like that. And now, final question. Our last question from some of these were from my dad, and also the piece I read in the beginning. I, I initially wrote, and then my dad added his flavor. So this is a true collaboration. We we collaborate all the time, but this last question is from this guy. What do you wish we'd asked you? Mm. <laughs> Man, that's uh Um I He's a pain in the ass, man. Yeah, that's uh well, in due part, why? Because it, why it's tough is because this was a this was this was like very real. Hmm. So I mean, I if I if I was in another setting, it was very superficial. Yeah, I would have been like, man, let's talk about something real. Like why, you know, you know what, like some darker side, you know. It's but it's funny I th you say that. Maybe we need a light question. As I was like, like, what's your favorite coffee to drink on a well, Wednesday? <laughs> but it's tough in regards of that, you know. Like I think that I've been at. I I I mean, fuck. I don't, I'm not trying to slip out of the question because, but. But you, you guys came up with some really great 
questions Perfect. in regard of a lot of truth. Awesome. So I would have I would have wanted that, you know, oh, ask me man. something about my dark side or something that I can yeah. like be honest about, you know. So I uh but I want to answer the question. No, though, you do. You know? Like I, I don't know. I, I I don't I yeah, you know, I like I'm satisfied. Answer. Awesome. I in in fact I feel I feel um uh alleviated by some weight in uh, and do part of this. That's amazing. You know? So if anything this was like a therapy session. That's the answer. That's a great answer. Cool. So I'm gonna leave this beautiful flow with this quote. Um, since today is Halloween, we're about to create a song. I would like to close on a poetic note. Last night I finished reading a novel by Tom Robbins, Even Cowgirls Get the Blues. Some of y'all know this is one of my true, true heroes. Shout out to Mr. Robbins. These lines jumped out at me. Having a way with birds, Sissy knows that the spirit cannot soar with one wing. She has learned how a thing's opposite holds it together. In Sissy's dream is a man who does not deny himself, but who is himself to the full limit of himself as she has been. Mad love, y'all. Thank you for listening. To be continued forever in all the forms. Peace and love. Oh, how can people get in touch with you? Is there any last thing you'd like to add in a more reality-based thing of if people want to follow, uh, reach out? Yeah, I, well, um, just look out for this crazy-looking caveman <laughs> mug. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, uh, just the music. Um, and, oh, man, this, I don't even want to, but at Clever's World on Instagram yep. with a K. Yeah. Um and that yeah, that's it. I'll be in your city, country, uh headphones somewhere. Yeah, yeah, somewhere speakers, stage sometime soon. Um yeah. And stay tuned for some music coming with with us and clever as well. Thank you for listening. Yeah. Mad love. Every day is Halloween. Body is a costume. Talk to you soon. Thank you for listening to the Pink Hearse Podcast. You can follow us on Instagram at Channel the Sun and contribute to the cause at patreon.com slash channel the sun for ever evolving bonus material. We ask our listeners to subscribe to our podcast for new episode alerts and to leave comments and reviews through your podcast platform. We are an independent operation creating art from the heart and your support means the world to us. I'm Prospect Lux, executive producer. Thanks for listening and keep on growing.